How are you doing and what have you been looking at? Good, I'm good. Kind of, uh, wow, what have I been looking at? Shipping routes and plane routes and garbage around the earth. <laughs> so uh, flight MH370, uh, I guess? No, no, not at all. I kind of let that one go. I, um, yeah, I just can't relate to all the stuff that's happening with it. You know, I mean, when the guy pulled the phone out of his butt, I think I was done with it. It's like, mm, yeah, this just sounds made up to me. Yes, I know, because the reason why I said that, uh, because I was looking at the latest headlines, and uh, aside from Peter Jackson there, the director of The Lord of the Rings, lending his private jet plane to the search, um, they're talking about how Malaysian Airlines flight MH370 search shows the extent of ocean trash. <laughs> so that's all they're finding, really, is a lot of garbage, uh, yeah. you know, and not much yeah. else. And then they're saying stuff like, well, we'll probably never find it, which would be unbelievably convenient, I suppose, for the powers that yeah. be, right? Of course. Of course. And... and... You know, if if they wanted to steal these particular people at any time, they could have done it anywhere. They could have done it prior to them getting on a plane. I mean, they have the ways and means to be able to do it. So I just can't seem to buy it. I'm just having a hard time with it. Yeah, I, I totally see. I 100% agree. I mean, I, I think, uh, you know, right from the beginning, I thought the whole thing was, was bullshit. And then I finally started to get sucked into it when I heard about uh, uh, Field McConnell and his um, uninterruptible Boeing pilot system that they had installed and not told any of the pilots. So I found that part of the mystery at least intriguing enough to cover it and, and look into it. And then, of course, all the uh, technological corporations that are involved with these airlines and that's a whole other story in itself which makes it interesting because I think the average person has and even the average pilot has very little knowledge about the system that they operate in mm -hmm. yeah yeah I don't even know what to say about it anymore I mean he's right these systems were put in place uh, you know I, I totally trust his, his expertise on that I mean, he has no reason to lie regarding it. So, but yet there's still this other development of, of uh, for, you know, how did they pick up one cell phone, not the other cell phones, you know, pinging, turning it on. Yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's just kind of gotten out of hand. It's, you know, usually if you, they're fe feeding you BS, it's usually BS. You know, if it sounds too good to be true, that's just kind of what I'm, I'm thinking. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, it's like so much of what we get fed uh, is total BS to begin with. And since this story has been epic BS, there's no yeah. reason to believe that uh, almost anything that comes forth. I mean, I, I the. The only thing that I would really like to solve about the MH370 mystery as it is uh, if there was an actual flight that actually left the airport, if that actually happened and if there's some way of 100% verifying that. But otherwise, I mean, the whole thing could just be an elaborate hoax just to uh, distract us from what they are really up to. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing is we don't even know that the flight was real. Yeah. I mean, they give us a bunch of names, and I started cross-checking them with the patents uh, from the Patents Office for Freescale Patents. Yep. And the names don't match the patents of what's being claimed. So that's kind of when I said, hmm, you know, I, I can't find the names of, of that are on the patents on the uh, names of the flight. So... If you cross-check them, you can just go under Freescale um, Patents. Right. And it should come up for uh, 2014, 2013, 2014. And uh, just a minute, I'm put, putting it in the search here. <clears throat> and it comes up semiconductor. You know, it says...
is pat patents of uh, yeah there's the, they're not the same names they're not the same names as the the 20 uh employees of freescale that were supposedly on that plane um sorry I, uh, they're not the same names as the no. 20 so-called Freescale employees that were uh, supposed to be on that plane? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. So it's just another uh, element of this whole thing that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, like for me, I think the most interesting thing that I've heard about this whole thing is Field McConnell's uh, stuff dealing with the uninterruptible pilot because I think that's something that very few people knew about before this whole thing uh, happened so if one good thing has come out of this whole uh, you know big whole BS mystery that they've concocted it's perhaps that maybe now um, we're getting an idea of what type of control they have over our vehicles that we uh, take for granted, you know, that are in mm -hmm. the controls of human hands, but uh, might very well be in the controls of corporations like Circo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, I don't even know what to say about it anymore. It's just, it, it's such a confusing story, and they want it, they want it that way, of course. Mm -hmm. I heard the somebody was was making the analogy that it was like a magician where you were looking at one hand when the other hand was doing the trick basically that um, they've got us all worked up and looking into this mystery and there's so many different um, storylines that get fed either through the mainstream media or even the alternative media that uh, people who delve into these conspiracies can get totally lost and yeah. meanwhile they're working out these trade packs, uh, you know, secretly behind our backs, uh, these things that will truly destroy our uh, national sovereignty, you know, um, like apparently Canada's working on a free trade deal with China right now. That uh, TPP, yeah. Yeah, that, well, the TPP is, is even separate from that, but that, yeah, that definitely the TPP, you, it's funny how those kind of stories just evaporate. Uh, not that they were ever anything big to begin with because the corporate media did everything humanly possible to cover up um, any sort of interest in the TPP, is, which I think is probably one of the most important things that is going on right now because it really does uh, get to the heart of what this one world government is about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I was just kind of going over <clears throat> a patent list. I'll, I wanted to send it to you. Sure. Here, I'll just drop it in your window. Um, oh, Casey's on. Do you want to bring him in? Sure, bring in whoever. Okay, just a minute. Cool. Is Casey uh, Ender the Stars? Uh, that's right. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's right. I don't know where Max is. I'll draw him in here, and, and I guess he... Oh, I guess he's on now, I think. Greg is just finishing up his dinner, so he'll be here in a minute. <clears throat> yeah, you guys are on on totally different time lapse, eh? No, no, actually, <clears throat> uh, Greg uh, lives not too far away from me. He's uh, he just finished work and uh, got home about six thirty, and then he <clears throat> called me. Hey, so. hey, Max, what's going on, guys? We were just talking about uh, the patents on Freescale in regard to the flight and. And uh, I dropped a link here of the patents, and I told him that they don't match the names on the list of the um, the guys who were on the flight. No surprise, eh, Max? I'm sorry, I missed that whole thing. I was doing something else. <laughs> She's saying that the uh, the freescale patents that um, Field McConnell was uh, talking about right. the twenty. Yeah. Uh, workers or uh, tech workers or whatever that were on the plane for Freescale um, that the patent, the names that are under the patent don't match the names that were on the flight itself. On the flight itself. Right, yeah. yeah, the whole thing's a, is a hoax. There's nothing real about it, I don't think. Yeah, I, I just sorry, I was just trying to find the uh, registers, uh, registry list for uh, flight 370 Am I off? No, you're on. Oh, okay. 
<laughs> that's yeah. probably that's probably Casey dropping in and out. Um, yeah, I was trying to get. I'm just trying to find it again. I had it before, of all of the people who were registered on the flight, right? Right. Uh, Max, do you still have that on flight? What is it? Now? Do I still have what? The uh, yeah, the people who were on that flight. Gee, I had it. I had looked into it, and then I just kind of discarded it, and I should have actually done a video on it in regard to the fact that if they're not on the patent list. I really do need to do a video. Yeah, that, that would be important information. Um, another one of the uh, oh. people that I looked into and um, Red Pill Revolution did a video on was the Sarah Bajic. I don't know if you heard this woman, but her uh, supposed boyfriend... Yes was on the flight. She is an extremely suspicious. She's been on all the mainstream media outlets, including the BBC, CNN, you name it, right? And yeah. uh, I checked her out, and like I saw her uh, Facebook page, and it was like she had Obama and uh, Anderson Cooper. <laughs> you know, the list yeah. of Yeah, Red Pill uh, did a video on that. Yeah, yeah. And, did, uh, is Red Pill... Did we get in touch with Red Pill? Cause it was, we, we're going to do a video tonight explaining everything about everything, and I'm going to put Red Pill's uh, video in there, and then also there's another video that was made today I think I'm going to put in there. Morris made one. Matter of fact, let's let's see if we can get, get in touch with Morris. I think uh, Jeff is recording us now, right? Yep. Are you editing later? <laughs> oh, well, I'll see. I mean, uh, I don't really think uh, we need to edit stuff uh, unless uh, we get like completely uh, shut down at some point have to start right. up again but uh i think most people yeah, let me know if you're recording i like to start when we start and that's it you know <laughs> yeah exactly it takes too much time i mean max you know i'm sure uh 49 you know that it takes a lot of time to put up videos uh, it uh, does. uh max did a great job of our conversation there um uh, last week i thought that was really well done and it's it's unfortunate that uh we can't seem to get uh, more people um tuning into your page, but I'm trying to do that. I'm trying to get more people to turn to... Nah, the odds are against us. Without the, our website will never never go viral. Uh, we haven't seen one red cent from it. No one's contributing. A couple of people did, and we thank them for that. If in case you're going to put this live, see? I don't yeah. know what to say. No? But listen, we're, they're, they're, we're working against us. Okay, We can't win this. Okay, you got people who are lazy. They don't care. They want to do whatever they want to do. We're sitting here 24-7, night and day, working on this thing, spinning our wheels for no freaking reason. It's really starting to piss me off. I'm tired of it. People have to do their part. I'm if they, pissed. If they would just People share the articles. Their part. Whatever it is. You know? No one's having any fun. I'm having the most miserable <laughs> fucking time of my life doing this shit. I really am. If you think yeah, it's fun to have a fucking website, you're out of your mind. Put that in the freaking video. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm exhausted. Uh, my health is, is deteriorating. I can't take it anymore. Take How's it that? Anymore. How's that? <laughs> I, I could totally sympathize, Max. I know uh, I even have a website which I haven't even worked on because it takes so much work just to keep a YouTube page running. And uh, I, I like just being able to get videos up and get information across. And uh, as long as YouTube is working, well, it's good enough for me at the time being. But boy, oh boy. We are up against, I mean, it, yes, the deck is totally stacked against us. Um, I, I look at the top truther channels. I mean, if you eliminate people like Alex Jones. <laughs> I love for a minute. All right, let's see if we get some people in here. i got to start recording too in a minute. Yeah, you know, if you, if you eliminate people like Alex Jones and Mark Dice, you're talking about people like ourselves that have 10, 20, maybe 50,000 subscribers, and that's it, right? And uh, it, the, the rest of the community is all just obsessed with... Uh, the latest uh, Jenna Marbles video, or <laughs> the Young Turds, or whatever, man. You know, it's it's uh, and as, yeah. you, as you know, I mean, like we could put out really solid work, and it'll never get featured. It'll never get on the YouTube front page uh, because they don't want us to be heard, basically. Yeah. Oh, you should you should see like right now I have like up and twenty five views. How does that happen? Yeah. Yeah, uh, enter. Yeah, it's it's it seems to be happening with um, just the truther videos. I notice because I look at my subscriptions, and I see 
the people with the truther channels are the <laughs> ones that hardly get any views. Like it'll say eight views and you'll have like 40 or 50 thumbs up, right? And uh, who's in control of this, this uh, call? Because I got a call from people. Um, I think Jeff, Jeff called me. Uh, I'm back. <laughs> Sorry about that. I dropped. It's okay. Is, is Enter the I'm Stars just, there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Yeah. I just back. Sorry, I got a horrible Skype here. <laughs> I think we all have our problems. Maybe all problems. Maybe it. Yeah. So what were you saying? Well, it's just the smaller channels. Just totally don't get any views. Great information. But they just don't get the views that they should. Right. I'll tell you, we have some loyal... Oh, we have some loyal people. And they share like crazy. But this is ridiculous. Mine's terrible, hey? It's just hard. It's, it's, it, they're sharing. They're sharing. we got thousands of people sharing... To other thousands of people, it should go viral. Some stop gaps in place to prevent that from happening. I don't know exactly how it works, but it is not working correctly. Yeah, I would wager to say that uh, if if your uh, certain channel has been flagged, <laughs> which no doubt all our channels have been, then you were never going to get the million uh, plus views that some of these people get for their uh, video game or uh, you know, um, latest celebrity gossip videos. And that's just the way they've stacked the deck. So, uh, you know, if we're going to use their platform, we're just going to have to put up with their censorship, I guess. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's their realm. I mean, we're just intruding onto their realm. Uh, I mean, the devil works in the airwaves, right? We're just uh, uh, utilizing a little bit of, of his magic in order to spread the truth I guess so we're, we're working in his realm uh, yeah, he can't I, keep Andrew around for more than 5 seconds yeah he's bad he's, he's, he's bad yeah I don't know what's going on I feel like they're shooting a wave beam <laughs> on my side. I'm on my iPhone we thought it was my computer before but now it's you know it's doing it on my iPhone uh, so what happened to Red Pill? I don't know. I, uh, he's not on right now, and I didn't get a message back from him. Um, Terry's not feeling super duper well, so she said she's going to kind of be muted, but she'll listen to the conversation. Well, it, you know, she's not going to talk. What's what's the point? Because then it's just going to eat up more bandwidth for us here. They're going to be skipping out. <clears throat> Her voice sounds horrible. <laughs> she, no reason to listen in. So is it? Does it work with Skype? Because I'm kind of new to this, but uh, the more people on, is there more lag? I don't know. It depends on, on people's connections. Like, I got good connection. I got good uh, internet, so I got high speed. If somebody yeah. has, has low speed or a crappy connection, they're just going to be uh, crapping in and out. Do you have high speed? Yeah, I got high speed. Uh, I have high speed, too, but... Skype doesn't like me. <laughs> You're in Canada. So is Jeff. Jeff's in, Jeff's in the city, though. I'm kind of rural. Yeah. Yeah. Isolated. Cool. You're lucky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're going to be a lot better off uh, in the long run when the shit hits the fan, that's for sure. Uh, I don't want to be in the Aaron city. Not here. I yeah. No, it'd be, it would be awful to be in the city for sure. So today, I guess there was another shooting at Fort Hood, huh? Yeah, I, I heard I that. No idea. I haven't been looking. They confirmed one I dead. And uh, I heard the uh, wolf shits are going on about it, saying it's very <laughs> sketchy details, and uh, they've got, so far, one dead, 15 injured or something like that. Um, I, don't even have to, I don't even have to look at it. Just say Fort... Just say... No, it's shooting at Fort Hood. It's a fake. It's a phony. It's a fraud. That's all. Don't even want to look into it. Don't care. Don't want to see an article. Don't want to hear a newscast on it. It's a freaking fraud. They all are. Well, you don't have shootings at Fort Hood. You don't have shootings in military bases. It's an impossibility. It does not happen. End of story. Don't even bother looking at it. Don't give it any attention. Forget about it. 
These people have to understand these shootings are fake. Okay? 100% fake. There's nothing real about them. Absolutely. Don't even go looking at it. I'm tired of it. I really am. And they'll keep parading prayers until they get everybody's guns. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I did a video today that I just finally got up on YouTube that uh, was on the Connecticut gun grab dealing with Sandy Hook. And, of course, they use Sandy Hook as the pretext for grabbing the guns because that's the whole purpose of Sandy Hook or one of the major purposes of the whole event. And I can totally see where Max is coming from because, like Max, I've covered a number of these false flags thinking just recently to the Navy Yard's a hoax that they pulled off which had no photos no nothing it was just it was just make believe but uh hey the mainstream guy on CNN says it happened so i guess it must have right <laughs> yeah yeah well there was there was a sketchy navy yard shooting not too long ago they haven't really covered it a lot it was about uh two guys and moving stuff for cargo or some kind of thing and uh, they were with two women prior to uh, disappearing, and they seem to be the same two women that the Malaysian pilots were with. You know, it's it's just, oh, my gosh, it's such a woven web. How can we unravel it? We just can't. It's just lie within a little truth within twisted lies. You, you can't untangle it. Listen, before we go any further, who else? Are we going to wait for somebody else, or am I going to start recording? Hmm. I uh, we can start recording, Max, because uh, Greg is going to come on uh, once he's finished his dinner. He only got off work at 6.30, so he, he called me just before and said he was having dinner. And as soon as he's ready, he's going to jump in. So, uh, But you go right ahead. Um, I've been recording since the get-go and uh, just trying out this new software here, and it seems to be working yeah. okay. Are you going to are you gonna edit up to this part? Because I like to start clean. Um. <laughs> No, probably not. I'll just put okay. it up, but uh, it depends. I mean, uh, unless you've got something solid that you want to go with right now, then I could use as a headline. Um, then I will. Uh, you guys had an earthquake uh, seven hours ago in Panama, 6.0, 6.3. Yes. Aftershocks of the one in Chile, I guess, eh? Yeah. And, and yeah. Uh, I saw that there's been a lot of solar activity as well, so probably connected to what's been going on in, in uh, on the sun as well. <laughs> it's not my field at all. <laughs> yeah. Is there, did uh, the massive earthquake that happened, that was like an 8.3, was there any serious effects uh, in Chile or is it like from what I heard last, it wasn't, there wasn't too much damage because it was out at sea? I have an article. Yeah, this this connection is really bad. All right, Aaron is not going to come. Right, I asked him. He's yeah, I'll be there. I'll be here. Yeah. It's a half hour now. I'll be there. Oh God, I just want to start on time, get my shit together, and then do it. I'm really pissed off today. I, you have no idea. <laughs> you sound like you're in a bad <laughs> yeah, mood. No <laughs> clue how thing. pissed off I am today. I hope you're not mad at me. I had to go to town. No, I'm not mad at you. I'm, not, I'm just. I'm <laughs> mad. I'm mad. I'm mad. I'm just mad. Angry. I hate everything right now. I just <laughs> can't take it anymore. I spent an hour on the phone with my utility company, so I your state of mood. <laughs> Focused on things, but then again, what's the what's there to miss? Because everything is it's no mystery. You know, a shooting comes on TV. You don't need anyone to tell you it's fake. I don't care what's on that TV. Nothing. It, even if they're telling you the truth, it, you don't listen to it, man. It's that simple. It's that easy. For God's sakes, that's all there is to it. It's bullshit TV. There's nothing on there for you. Nothing. Absolutely nothing for you on that TV. Absolutely. The news is 100% lies and deception. That's it. I don't care what it is. I, I, it pisses me off. He's mad as he heck and he's not going to take it anymore. <laughs> he is. He is. I totally he's see it, Max. Uh, I mean, 
you know, unless you actually witness uh, a shooting, you probably should uh, not accept anything that comes off the, the boob tube, you know, period, because uh, they, they are so adept at uh, cooking up these tales and uh, manufacturing bullshit, manufacturing witnesses, uh, you know, and once you dig into it enough, like we have, you realize, well, you know, where, where on earth can you get real news from? You know where, where can you actually find out what's going on? Because you sure as hell cannot trust any of the major ne news networks. And I've done work recently exposing some of the quasi alternative uh, networks like Democracy Now, which are 100% bullshit as well. So it's pretty hard. Well, uh, well, you you just look at the Fort Hood report right currently, just right now, and and in like the first couple paragraph, it says. The Bells County Sheriff Office dispatched deputies and troopers from the Texas Department of Public Safety to a nearby post after receiving reports of active shooter. Uh, sheriffs, anyway, they all headed out to the base and all that. Now, since when does an army base allow the police onto it? Isn't that what the MPs are for? Since when does a uh, county sheriff's department have any active part in what goes on on a military base. Right there, it tells me it's all baloney. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, uh, I agree. It's it's another. It's just another example of of you know if you just all you have to do is is have a little bit of uh, intelligence when you read these things and you know, a little bit of critical thought and you can see how these stories right from the get go don't add up. Right. Because there's there's never a point where uh, civilian uh, police are active on a base ever. These this these bases are full of guys with guns, and they can't even protect themselves. They got to call in the police. Come on, I don't believe it. It just doesn't make sense to me. I, I understand. Hey Jeff, I'm not going to record. I'm going to I'm going to steal from you when you put it up. <laughs> hey, no problem, Max. Don't worry about it. I'm hoping uh, it looks like it's working because I've got this software that uh, actually shows my voice and your voice is going off. So as far as I know, everything's recording fine. <laughs> Did you do a test? You got to do a test. Yeah, I tested, just, I tested just before with uh, Greg, just before he went for his dinner. So uh, it's working. Yeah. You know I'm what's crazy? You guys yeah. coordinate anything. I, I'm just fried. <laughs> what were you, you know going to say there? Go ahead. I uh, was going to say. Um, I've been feeling the same way. I wonder if they're doing some kind of like harp resonance uh, us because I was feeling exactly how Max was feeling the other day. Like I feel like I'm digging a hole with a shovel and I, the dirt just keeps falling back in on it. Yeah. Yeah, you know. Uh, what are we doing? It, it's it's difficult because we're the people. Great audio. Uh, as I said before, we're we're we make up the community that's actually questioning all this stuff. Um, you know, if you subtract the Alex Jones and, and Mark Dice type characters, the real truthers that are out there are people like us, and, and uh, we're the ones that uh, have to kind of sift through all the bullshit and lies. And then, you know, we get this sort of understanding of how crooked and corrupt everything is. I mean, like, we can't trust our governments, we know that for sure, but we sure as shit can't trust the corporate media who are yeah. pathological, if not homicidal liars. I mean, they're, they're just, they lie about everything. So it, it's, it's a lot of uh, burden on our shoulders. And I think that's why uh, you can get pretty down uh, about mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Well, when, when we all started, you know, when we had our 50, you know, subs and, uh, our mantra was one mind at a time. Mm -hmm. um, but at a certain point, I think we that, or we thought that it was going to take off and that those one minds would help foster 10 more minds and 10 more minds, that it would extrapolate out and the work wouldn't be so. But I feel like my job now is just as tough as it was when I had 50 subs. You know, but I got to recognize that we have some really. Uh, you know, I know that I have a couple subs that are amazing at sharing stuff. Spirit Wolf and Dana and and uh, just a, a few of them that just 
just go crazy with sharing this stuff. You know, if more, a lot of people view our stuff and go, yeah, okay, I agree, I don't agree, but that's it. They don't share it, they don't spread it. You know, if you agree, share it. If you don't agree, comment, let us know. Uh, Max doesn't do comments. So if if you get a response to a comment, 90% of the time it's me because I'm interested in hearing what you have to say. Max is is so focused on putting the materials up there, making them professional. Uh, you know, we work on subject content together, but he does the final take on it, puts it up, and it looks beautiful. He finds the pictures. He does the work on that. We, we research as a team, but uh, the final production is Max and me. I take care of emails and responses, and I get overwhelmed a bit by that sometimes, and the research. So it's a joint effort, but it needs to be a team on the outside, too, of people sharing. I mean, Jeff, you've got some incredible information. How do you find that your subs are sharing? Are they sharing your material? Do they thumb it up and leave it, or do they anything? Yeah, um, I think as of late, it's been going pretty well. Um, I seem to be reaching more people, and, uh, you know, just there seems to be more sharing going on. I mean, I'll see some bigger channels come onto mine and, and share, which helps because then you get a lot of people coming in saying stuff like, well, thank you very much for sharing this. Uh, I didn't even know this channel existed. And now I found another good place to get information. So right. I think that um, like what we're doing now is part of how, how we need to uh, work together in order to spread this information. I mean, one of the things that I do, if you look on my YouTube page, is I put um, a whole bunch of other uh, YouTube channels up on my featured channels to try to create a sort of network of people. You think you can make this better? Pardon me? Uh, no, there's, there's lag. You went out for like uh, 15 seconds, and then oh, when I was talking, you're still talking. Sorry, Max. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know... Uh, Skype. I just, uh, I, I can see the positivity uh, happening, but at the same time, I see where Casey's coming from, where it still feels like you have to work just as hard. I mean, it's not like, you know, like you see these pop culture type channels, and they could just fart out a video about absolutely nothing at all, and, you know, people will just flock to it. Of course, it'll get featured and, and uh, you know, get all kinds of promotion. And yet we can sweat away, you know, day and night trying to disseminate this really important information. And it's a, it's a constant uphill battle. And uh, really the only way I think that we can really make it work is to try to work together and promote each other's work. Yeah. 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 I just, you know, if I had my channel without the website, I would have been more focused on what I was doing. Because I haven't been able to make uh, any videos like I did before. Well, first of all, they took they took most of the shootings out. I mean, they still love shootings, but they're not they're not focusing on school shootings, you know, uh, per, per se like they did before. Like, except now they got that Fort Hood shooting, which is a hoax. You don't even have to think about that. Uh, I'm just a little upset because I was so busy. The website is new. And I've been so busy working on 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 it that I, I totally didn't look into the 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 Malaysian 370. I didn't see from the get go. The whole thing was an entire fiasco, right down to the passengers. The passengers, the the family, the family of those flights. They're Chinese. They're Asian people. Uh, even if they weren't Asian, you know, because the people say, well, Asians don't lose it in front of the cameras. You know, and another thing, why were the cameras surrounding this woman all the time? Mm -hmm. They're focused on a certain group. All right. Does anyone react that way? They don't even know if, they're, if their loved ones are dead. They're just getting information. They're, you know, they, they don't start wailing. Okay. This was done to, to pull on your heartstrings, to, to show you, like, this is real when it is absolutely fake. Okay. Whatever they do with that plane is just to get a different kind of security, to take away more freedoms, and to have another step forward to their agenda. Yeah. It doesn't really matter what part of the story you you you, you interpret or, or try to think is real. It's all crap. You should you should pay that no mind. All of it is propaganda. All of it is just trying to convince you that there's something other going on. But you know that they're getting more. They're, they're really tying. Tang you up on this now because you know there's people like us that pick these things apart because most of them are ridiculous. 
So what they did is they threw story after story after story for us. And I said that in the other video that we did. They have certain packages for certain levels of awakeness. Yeah. Okay? The, all, these, all these things they threw at us with the guy having the cell phone up his ass and making a phone call, taking a picture, that's hogwash. When we got to that level, I'm like, I can't believe this stuff anymore. Okay, there's no, it didn't land at, at uh, Diego Garcia, didn't offload any passengers because there were none. The thing was pre-planned, it was in the Superman movie, it was in a couple other, you know, it, it's just like 9-11. 9-11, there was no planes, right? Well, the same with this. There was no planes on for, for this uh, MH370. Yeah, um, it's a, it's a it's, big joke. It's a, it's a huge obstacle, and for me... Um, that's one of the reasons why I focused a lot on Sandy Hook uh, is because I think it's a provable hoax and that if we're going to reach people and convince them or try to awaken them, we have to show them the magician or we have to show them the wizard behind the curtain. The corporate media is just all bunk. It's all full of lies. And if we could package good presentations together to uh, you know, show these people then we can demonstrate how just one story is all bullshit and how much it's used and, and how they have, you know, changed so much, just like 9-11. I mean, everything changed since 9-11, right? Yeah, I agree, but listen, we're, we're just, we're repeating ourselves and we're singing to the choir. Yeah. You know, not very many new people are coming and we're waking people up slowly that haven't seen this information. But then you got to get, you know, you got to keep being telling them, look, this shooting's fake. This shooting's fake. And the people who've been watching for years know that these things are fake. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it takes so long to wake someone up because you say one thing is fake. Oh, everything is fake. You think everything is yes, everything, <laughs> everything, <laughs> man. Pretty much. Everything yeah. is fake, man. Nothing is real. That's it. Because if you, if they have a shooting and the president comes on and you give him the finger and turn it off, it's over, man. Mm -hmm. There's nothing else to do. If everybody did that, guess what? You don't pay tax, you don't have starving people, and you don't have to you don't look at that freaking asshole on the TV anymore. Because it's story after story, bullshit after bullshit, play after play, scenario after scenario, lies after lies, propaganda after propaganda. It's all made up. It's a schedule, man. They got this thing scheduled in, inking it in. Oh, how are we going to fix this shoot? Where, where are we going to schedule this shooting in? Oh, are we still doing that? Yeah. Well, this school shooting, are we, are we going there? Are we going to have ambulances? Are we going to have actual victims this time? Are we going to put some live bombs? What are we doing today? It's a schedule. It's written down Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and they put it out in the news just like the Newman Show. That's exactly what this life is all about. None of it is real. Well, it's interesting. It's a lot to do with perception, definitely. And, and when we look at, at the perception right now, say like uh, Mail Online, okay, let's just look there. Um, it, it, it's a big push right now if you look at the whole mindset of old people, old men with young girls and, you know, and then like he says, you know, it's, it's a schedule of, you know, let's keep them in fear, but in the meantime, let's really take down their morals and, and degrade them and, you know, the acceptance of uh, promiscuity or, I don't know, did that come through? <laughs> I think I'm cutting out again. You cut out and then you, your, your volume drops. It's really weird after huh. that. You come back. Yeah, Casey, you had something you want to say? Oh, I just came back on. I <laughs> didn't even hear the rest of the conversation yet. Max, <laughs> Max was just raging. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is raging Max. Sorry, yeah. guys. Sorry for the people listening. How's that? I'm just, I'm sorry. I think a lot of them would share your you. frustration, friend. Um, I, 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 I totally uh, see it and feel it and know it and live it. And uh, it, it's part of the whole problem. You know, the immense problem is, is, is I mean, as I said, I mean, it, it's waking people up to the reality that the news is just another <clears throat> fake sort of show. You know, it's, it's, it's just, a, 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 you know, like a movie, basically. Well, well, look what they're doing to us. You know, they're making us think and, 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 and try to search for information, but it's just them throwing it at us. We don't have to do this anymore. 
I don't have to go searching for some guy having a cell phone up his ass taking a picture. Or somebody telling me the plane landed in, in uh, Diego Garcia. Because none of Hello? No, none of it seems true. It's real. They're making their head. I don't want to do it anymore. I don't. And, and, and it's, but, but, you and, know, and, just, that's really bothered me because I got into the whole thing where maybe it's real again. You know, and you can't be afraid to put something up. That may not be correct because I got news for you. <clears throat> that's correct because it's all from them. The best thing I can tell you is it's all lies and propaganda, and you got to get them out. You got to get them out of office. You got to get rid of the government. Period. There's absolutely no other way. Every single one of them. There's not a soul in your government that's any good. They're all rotten, man. They're all gone. Because, it, you know, every time you hear the news, Obama's going to give somebody, a bill, this country, a billion dollars. And we're spending a trillion dollars on this on this technical device. But you can't spend a couple of thousand dollars. It's all it would take to feed some children. Mm -hmm. You can't do that, right? That should click in your mind right there. Something's not right. Why do we have starving people in the world? Why? They spend trillions on a whim, and they throw it away, and they burn it, and they give it away, but they can't help people with it. No. There's a series of wars, and, and tell Russia, tell China, tell Korea, look, is everybody hungry and thirsty? We got food and water. What else do you need? What can we do for you? That's it. There's nothing else to discuss between countries. You got enough food and water? You got clothes? It could be heat. You got oil? In fact, it's so simple. Here, take this. Oh, here, I'll give you this. You know, a little common courtesy. Everybody's happy. You, you, you take care of the human people, the nature first. And there shouldn't be any wars. Why would there be wars? It's impossible to have a war. They make the wars. They're the criminals, and they're not going to stop. I mean, they're spraying the skies. They're dumping the garbage on us. It, it's not us doing this to us, and it's not our fault. No, but and, they're going to convince us that it is our fault. Yeah. Right? Sure. Sure, and people eat it up. It, it's like, can you really be that stupid that you would eat up the fact nothing grows, your plants don't grow, your uh, your regular seeds won't grow because it's your, your dirt is covered in aluminum, strontium, and barium. Are you kidding me? You know, if they're doing something for any good, if it really is for good, for some kind of purpose, then why not come out and tell us what it's for? Because it's so nefarious, I don't believe it's for any good. No, that's, Do you agree? Uh, absolutely. I mean, I think that's, that's the whole nature of Agenda 21. Um, they don't want us to know. And then what they do is they'll, they'll try to brainwash the children um, by going into the schools and using their propaganda and their films and whatever else. Um, but they've just completely cut the ordinary average citizen out of the discussion 100%. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, well, this is all going on, but we're not talking about it. We're not going to tell you about it. And we're going to pretend like nothing is, is – you're just a conspiracy whack job. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's the way that they, uh, they treat us, you know. Well, I want to make a statement for Canadians listening to this show. The other day on the radio, I was telling you this before, Jeff, is uh, the other day on the radio they asked a question, what do you think about the RCMP raising the um, a fine for you on your cell phone talking from 300 to 500 or something? And I tried to call in. I'm not sure that I made it on because you have to turn your radio on down. And I said to them, I said, you know, the whole regard to the fact that the RCMP are allowed to make the laws without discussion, without politician, without mandate, without vote. They just implement a law into order, and that's that. Now you have no say over it. Well, this is a draconian, draconian um, monarchy in, in regard to the police are the armed forces. It reminds me of the Georgia Di Guidestones where it says, you know, get rid of po petty politicians. Well, sure, because the police officer on the spot is going to make 
the law. He wants to. You shouldn't be questioning whether or not you agree with the RCMP uh, bringing up the, the fine. You should be asking the question, what the hell gives them the power to make the laws? They're not lawmakers. They are enforcers. They are not there to uh, implement the laws without regard to the to the citizens, the voters, the politicians, or debate. And and it makes me angry that nobody's questioning that. They're going, oh well, okay, it's only a couple more hundred dollars. That's not the point. The point is, is the RCMP exactly. is making the law. When are people going to get this? Well, here's the thing: the Queen of England is turning 88 this year. The last time she was in Canada was in 1984, and there are 88 floors in the Malaysian Twin Towers, and the boy climbed to the 88th floor of the Freedom Tower. Yeah. 88 is a very important number, and it's going to have a lot to do with the Queen of England and Canada, in my opinion, in the next coming weeks, months, and years. Well, I noticed the last time that they had those guys uh, go up on top of the tower and they uh, come down, uh, what were they called, freebasers? They jump, they just jump. After that, it was a, a big, it, it, it's almost like a prelude to events. It's, it's like a starter, like a starting gun. Every time somebody goes up there and does a jump or does a, a propaganda or a, a photo opportunity or somebody gets past security, it's almost like a starting gun to say, okay, now this is what we're moving an agenda forward. Does this make sense to you guys, what I'm saying here? Absolutely. It's, okay, here's, I think what we're getting close to understanding why they do this. Like Max said, they're basically setting up these events as foreshadowing to bigger events, and the, and if people ignore the signs, it gives them the green light to move forward because they know when they do the big event, no one's going to believe that it's a conspiracy. Well, and it's consent, it's consent by compliance. You know, it's like, okay, oh, well, what am I going to do? Well, keep going like that and go, oh, what am I going to do? If you don't get involved, and, and Max will argue with me, this is my point, I believe that you should get active in your community, you should be waking up people in your community, you should, uh, you know, make a stronghold with, with people of the same mind, mindset in your community and get involved because you can't kick them out, the dirty politicians out, if you can't get involved. Well, and that's a good point. Yeah. I just drove through a Taco Bell uh, drive through in my newest video that I have up, and there's a giant penis with uh, testicles hanging off of it in the uh -huh. form of a, like a drink with cherries at the bottom. Complete subliminal messaging. And I was so convinced of what I was looking at, I did a video on it. The video is being censored. It's got 60 thumbs up and like five thumbs down, and it's only got like 40 views. How does that happen? Yeah. So um, yeah. this is what we're having to yeah. deal with. So I told everyone, share this video. We'll force Taco Bell to take down this ad campaign. That's how it works. The more people we wake up, the more power we have. They'll never pull off another 9-11 again because too many people know that that was fake. They might do a different scenario, but they're not going to fly planes into buildings. Yeah. Well, yeah, we don't like, know that they're not going thing. to. Yeah. The Malaysian I, I, thing is, but no, you know, they didn't kill anybody. But that's that's almost like 9/11, right? They they faked air, airliners. They didn't. No, there was no airliners that crashed those buildings, and there was no airliners on on uh, Malaysian flight either. Well, there was no grieving the people because the people were actors. They were crisis actors. They came off a bus. Okay, they were all. There. They got their luggage. They're ready there. They're ready to scream. They were action. They started wailing in front of them. But uh, I think that was a test because they do want to do another 9 11. They want to see if they can get away with it. Right. Well, they Aaron, Aaron and I were talking about Flight 93. And, and How did you get all those grieving families in one spot at one time? Sorry. Did I cut out? Yeah. I'm I sorry. cut out for a second. <laughs> <laughs> but go ahead, 49. I, I, I wanted to say Aaron and I were doing a conversation about Flight 93. And we were looking at the monolith that they put up and it's in a semicircle and it points towards Mecca it's it's quite the controversy but we were looking into it because I had never looked into Flight 93 
Well, where it disintegrated, the only thing left over was what? A tachometer from the uh, flight. Anyway, uh, we were looking at Obama walking up to this rock and uh, Clinton and uh, Biden, and they put a, a wreath on this rock. And I just, I'm sorry, I'm really sorry, I had to laugh because I thought they must be laughing at us like crazy that they can put a damn rock in the field and we go out and we pay homage to that rock and we put wreaths on it. It's idolatry and they charge you 40 bucks to walk in there to go and, and, uh, you know, cry and weep over names on a stone that these people are not there, you know. It, it, it makes me ill that up up pops a McDonald's and a Taco Bell or, or Taco Time beside it to make more money. Ka-ching, ka-ching. But all they have out there is a rock. And it, it's like they must just laugh Go at fetch. us. You're like a dog. Yeah. yeah. Over yeah. there. It, it, is is Greg, know, Greg, are you there? I'm here, guys. Go, good evening. Awesome. Hi, What's good up, evening. Guys? How are you? Good. All right. How you doing? Max is angry. <laughs> Max is furious. Yeah, I'm starting to calm down now. I feel better now. <laughs> what, 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 what's bugging you, Max? It's all good, buddy. You weren't watching the news again, were you, Max? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what he was doing. That's your problem right there, buddy. <laughs> yeah. I found your problem. Yeah. You freaking turned on the TV again, and that was it. You went on. Well, this 93 thing, I want to just finish by saying uh, Flight 93, they had a, a thing to donate. And, you know, to put these rocks in the middle of a field in a little path with little et net niches that you go and put money or whatever in, you know, they still want $62 million to build this. I mean, what did it cost to pull a rock out, of, out there and put it out in the field? Are you kidding me? $62 million and we have children starving in this country and we have homeless anything. children and we have they want. people who need shelters and people who need help and but medical you, care you have globalists yeah. that need pro, uh, propaganda <laughs> yeah <laughs> right and you still being sent to the sandy hook family which are upper middle class families who don't need a dime from american citizens 100 yeah. percent yeah and, uh, I just covered a bit of that today in one of my videos, and it's it's disgusting. It's gotten up to a hundred million. That's a conservative estimate. What the Sandy Hook families have, or the sort of uh, whole relief fund has collected well, and divvied well, out. Listen, I got to make one point. I'm sorry about about the Sandy Hook uh, yep. donations. Okay, I hate to say it. Well, first of all, no one died at Sandy Hook, but I hate to say it. If the kids, if all those kids survived, they would really need the donations then. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? The kids are dead. Why what do you, you need? To, yeah. What are you paying them for? I think you would need twice the amount of money. Yeah. You see, you see my point? Why are you donating to these people? Because the kids are dead. Which they were never killed anyhow. But therapy costs more in Connecticut. <laughs> <laughs> are you kidding? With all the pharmaceutical uh, corporations' headquarters? <laughs> hey, those meds are expensive. And he makes too. the pain okay. go away. Yeah, exactly. Those meds are very expensive, okay? especially the good ones. Okay, not cheap. Not cheap to be high. You need uh, you need money. money. Well, hey guys, yeah. did you guys? Uh, I don't know if you spoke about the Fort Hood thing yet. Yeah. Yeah, we have. I was thinking that uh, this is their they're going to disarm all the uh, soldiers and bring sure. in robots. That's how they're going to do it. <laughs> they're going to see that. They're going to say the soldiers aren't even fit to fire at guns anymore. So we're going to bring in these robots that never it's fail. Oh nine. Right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I read oh, it. Things, man. It's the same place all the time. So we'll close this one down and we'll bring robots into Fort Hood now. And that'll be good. Well, I was yeah, reading we that the sheriff we went out to... Re yeah, I was reading that the sheriff went out to respond to it. What are they doing on a military base? Yo. Know? What on earth are they doing on a military base? You're just going to... They, they, they're clever like that, right? Yeah. They can say, oh, look, the military's crazy. They're all committing suicide and whatever. And we gotta, we got we to gotta arm the robots now because we well, can't I, trust the military. I think that we can see a lot of their objectives. And uh, one of them, of course, is to disarm the veterans. They're very worried because most veterans do stockpile weapons because, well, they have access to them. They get used to shooting them. And then they usually grow a fondness for having them. Um, so it is something that worries them quite a bit. 
So, and another, of course, is anybody on any sort of psychotropic medication, anybody with sort any sort of mental problems, which, you know, uh, at the end of the day, the way that these psychopathic pharmaceutical co corporations that control all the, uh, you know, doctors that are out there um, could be more than half the population. <laughs> so, I mean, I think that it's it's all part of a bigger plan to disarm everyone, but they have to start somewhere, so, you know. Yeah. Well, well, I, I, I was reading about Hermy. I think it's Hermy. That's the uh, fire and forget killer robot that the Israeli army produced, right? This thing is scary, man. It just goes in, finds the target, kills whoever's in the way, and comes back out and ready for the next mission. It's like, holy shit. They're going to yeah. get rid of the soldiers soon. They don't need them. Yeah. Right? They won't need them. They, they won't need them. They're going to be a liability to them. They might the turn down. on them. Yeah, well, that's it. They might turn on them, and they're like, wait a second. We can't have these people turning on us. Yeah. So um, that's where I was really creeped out because there's more and more of these, like, on-base shootings and stuff, and it's like, for sure, they're all false flags, but for what reason, right? And it's to fucking, they're going to disarm the military. They're going to do it, man. It's coming. I'm yeah. freaked out. I'm freaked out because yeah. they're sneaky bastards. Soldiers. And they don't. Once the soldiers go into the military, Terry, they are they start to understand any soldier with half a brain understands the corruption so when they come out their logical response is to want to stockpile weapons because they get it and so here's what the military does they the military sets them up for failure they're the ones that put them on the psychotropic drugs and i used to sell these drugs because i used to be a pharmaceutical sales rep and i sold xanax and i sold antidepressants in my did former life did i try them no Oh, okay. No, absolutely not. And I've had That's friends why he's that have, with us today. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Uh, they set them up because then they put them on the drugs, get them addicted, and then now they say, oh, since you're on these drugs, you can't own any weapons. Um, actually, they're asking, my friend is on Social Security in California, and when he went to Renew, part of the questions he was asked was, do you own a weapon, and are you willing to give that weapon up? This is on a social security disability application. Yeah, that's, Sorry, that's something, yeah. man. Um, I'll, I'll tell you just a quick anecdote here. Pat Tillman is an excellent example of yes. how a lot of former soldiers think. He went and served in Afghanistan and uh, was so disturbed by what he saw. Of course, he was a football star in the NFL before, and that's what made him such a big celebrity, that he actually made it known that he was going to go back to the United States once his term, uh, uh, term of duty was over with and become the top anti-war activist. And guess what happened to him? You guys know what happened yeah. to him? I mean, they shot him, right? They killed him. And it's it's been proven. Shot in the back by his buddies. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And, of Sh course, the That's whole crazy. story Shot used... in the back by the guys you're, who... The, the whole story was used uh, to push the narrative more on Afghanistan and to use the whole weeping, you know, uh, violins playing, aren't our soldiers our heroes, right? And uh, the disgusting reality to, was it, to the whole thing was that Pat Tillman was actually just trying to, to be a good person and tell about his experiences, and they killed him for it. So, you know, there's almost nothing they wouldn't do. Yeah. Oh well. Some of us were doing it. Like the background. Who is that? Is that you, Who Greg? <laughs> I think it might be Jeff. What are you hearing? What do you hear? A big major, like uh, ruffling uh, or a hum, like you know, like. Uh, That's Greg. <laughs> I think I'm the hummer, dude. Greg's gonna. Hummer. Greg's got to get a new microphone. But it's coming in okay here. I hear it, but it's it's not overwhelming. So if you can make it through, uh -huh. it's, it shouldn't no, sound it's too good. bad. But uh, yeah, I mean, you, all these you, things connect, you, you know. For a second, Greg, I want to see if it's you. Well, uh, you know, the new martial law, of course, is mm -hmm. called shelter in place, right? That's the new word for you're under martial law. Shelter. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. Shelter in place, right? Eh? Yeah, shelter in place. That means that they can come in and leave and go and what do whatever, right? Oh wow, wow, wow. 
Yeah, that's scary. That's uh, the play on words that they're using and, and uh, the evilness to it. I mean, uh, they're conditioning people. I thought that the whole Boston thing was a, a social conditioning experiment where they were trying to implement martial law on you know just one city for just for the big show whenever it comes, whenever their giant false flag is, is going to hit us. Um, then they'll have the soldiers ready and the people will already be conditioned, or so they hope, right? Mm -hmm. Do we know how many people are in Department of Homeland Security? Oh. <laughs> like, do we know? Like, is it 2 million, 3 million, million? Half? I can tell you how many were in uh, prior to 2001, September the 11th. <laughs> the big fat goose egg. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, yeah, no, I mean, knows no, eh? so it's got to be, it's got to be, it's got to be. Well, get used to some more because they're going to be in your your schools and malls and you know you can't hail a taxi without have one of them in, in the in the car already. You're going to be sitting there looking at you. Well, and then yeah. you got you got them in your schools and look at what they're doing to kids. I mean, I watched a video the other day when one absolutely by intention broke a kid's arm. It almost made me sick. I mean, he, he had the kid down, and he twisted his arm, and he broke it on purpose. Well, well pretty dark. Yeah. It, they, it, they, it, they really are conditioning the police to be more brutal. I think we're seeing it. And I think in a way that a lot of these events, I mean, the, the, the hobo that was killed up in uh, Albuquerque there, a lot of these events are yes. being used to condition us to be afraid of the police so that when they finally do come banging on our doors that we'll, uh, we'll go down on our knees and beg for their, you know, <laughs> for their yeah. for Mercy. them to rescue, yeah. rescue us, you know? Yeah. I'm going to be right back. I'm going to make some tea. All right. <laughs> but... But you look at the mindset in the meantime, you know, all the, all the uh, media is pushing in the entertainment business is, uh, you know, no morals, no, uh, you know, live as thou will. And yet, you know, you have the strong arm of the law saying, no, you won't. So you, it, it's such a twisted mindset. It really is. You know? like, like here in California, they tell you, oh, smoke all the pot you want. You see it on TV, you see Obama, this and that. But what do I see in the news every day? People getting busted for growing pot. Yeah. So what is it they're saying? I think that they just get these people to come out, then they bust everybody. Just like why they let us get away with what we're doing in the truth movement here on YouTube. They have all our names and numbers and everything about us. And one day, if we don't stop, they'll know where to come and get us. Sure. Oh, yeah, 100%. They got us all pegged from miles away. Uh -huh. That's why, um, like I was saying to Jeff, we're just connecting with each other, but honestly, we're just like a, a bunch of rabble that are following punk rock bands, right? I mean, <laughs> the, most people don't have a fucking clue what we're talking about, no matter how much we talk. And uh, you wake a person here or there, but it's the, the at the speed they're going, we can't keep up. We, we, we're, we're late to the game. We're late. We're fucking years behind them, right? They're so organized, and we're just... We're just a rabble band of, you know, rebels, right? Yeah. That are just fed up, that are just like, fuck you. But we were always like that. We were always fuck you people. We were never the, oh, okay, I'll do whatever you say, people, right? Mm -hmm. that, didn't, that never suited our personality. And a lot of people are like that. They're just like, it's okay. Everything's okay. You didn't be okay. There's a reason why they don't teach critical thinking in our high schools. I mean, they don't, they don't want people to question anything. And I think, uh, like what Enter was saying before about, you know, and, and you guys are saying about how there's this, you know, tug and war back and forth where they're telling you to do this and then they come and bust your ass. I think that's how they play with us because they want us always to be, question, not questioning, but they want us always to be in fear one way or another, right? And as long as people are in fear, well, they're mighty easy to control, right? Yep, and there was some. There was a famous person who used to be part of our group who has since talked a lot about fear and accused many of us here in this room of fear mongering. But the real fear is not acknowledging what's out there. That's the real fear because they have more fear than anyone can imagine because they control everything. They decide life and death. They decide trends. They decide laws. They decide who wins and who loses. 
all we're doing is, like you said, we're like the, the, the broken band of soldiers. Mad Max comes to mind, and it's kind of great that you had that little monologue there about the broken band of soldiers because this would be great for Max to put to some music. Oh, yeah. Jam. Well, listen, all I listen to is Irish, freaking Irish rebel music from God only knows when it was written, 1800, 1798, whatever they started to... I love that stuff, right? And I relate to it because nobody wants to be a slave, right? Yeah. Nobody wants to fucking do the bidding of the corporation or the, the crown or whatever they were bitching about, right? I mean, for us, it's the corporation. For them, it was the king of England for, you know, mm-hmm. for, you know, it's the same thing. It's like, no, I don't want to do that because that sucks. But you don't get another choice. Just like the Ukrainian people, they don't get another choice. They, you can have column A or column B. What about column C? Well, we broke column C. There's no column C, right? These are your choices. And it's like, fuck, I would hate to be Ukrainian. I'd be like, oh, man. I want to leave, right? <laughs> you know, you got one gang, I don't want to be. one one group of gangsters or the other. Really, I mean, it's it's not yeah, much exactly. of a choice, right? But it's With an interesting. Power. You know, I was just thinking, it's an interesting paradox that we live in because, on one hand, we have more information at our fingertips than ever before easily right and at the other hand we there's more control than ever before even though we have seemingly more freedoms at least when it comes to the internet and searching things down we are being watched more than ever you know and it's that's the paradox that we we exist in and it's really the the thing that we we need to break out of collectively we need to be able to break their control and the only way to break their control is to have a massive awakening happen and it you know, most people are not in the shape, either mentally or physically or even spiritually, to have the awakening. I think uh, Greg knows exactly what I'm talking about when you talk about family members who resist with every fiber in their body any sort of truth that you bring to them. It's like it's like an ethma to them. It's poison. They just you know, <laughs> they just turn away and you know start screaming. Like um, the Corbett report when he did that report to uh, James Corbett on. Uh on uh, control um, uh, cognitive dis- dissonance co- right? cognitive dissonance yeah. yes yes that was the best and it was like I never knew the term for I, I have to tell you I watched a movie the other night and it was called Divergent it just came out and it, it was the first time that I've watched a film that uh, didn't have, I mean, everybody naked and having an orgy kind of thing. It was quite the story. It was about different factions in society. Well, when, movie night sounds good at your house. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it, 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 was, wow. it, it was quite good because it had uh, these different uh, ideals. Like one group of the community were helpful and, and one group was farmers, one group were law, the other group were the warriors that protect the system. But anyway, each had their mindset and each had their niche and they had to go for a test to decide kind of like, you know, Hogwarts, which house you would go to. And in the end, it come, she's a divergent, which doesn't fit into any, and but you can't control her because um, her mindset is uh, very different thinking. So like us in, in seeing the things that we do. So she could see these things that other people couldn't because they were in their mindsets for that particular group. So it was quite a good show. And, and I mean, yeah, there wasn't any big sex love scenes kind of thing. It was just a really, it was a good show. So I would recommend everybody see it because it, it's a lot to do with truthers and what we see and how we see it, that we fit into all groups, we're part of all groups but we're different from everybody else because we see these things manifest in front of our eyes and we recognize what it is. And we're they've actually... Always, they've always hated the rebels. Yeah. For now, we're kind of fortunate because they would have hung us back in the day. That's so right. So for now, we're pretty good. Right? But, I mean, yeah. They, and this show is about them hunting the divergent, eh? Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, me uh, just covering The Walking Dead in a couple shows recently, um, the analogy that uh, I think I made, and I'm sure others have as well, was that the the people that are trying to survive um, are actually the truthers. The zombies represent the sheeple, 
And of course, the uh, the authority is beyond our vision, the top of the pyramid. However, the elites are living, you haven't seen yet on the show, just like we haven't seen. But I, I think in a way, that show kind of represents that uh, point of view because uh, even the creator said that the Walking Dead is all around us. It's actually existing right now. And I think the Walking Dead actually represents the sheeple. Well, when I try to wake people up, I call it waking the dead. <laughs> yes. I do. It, it's what it is. Well, yeah. um, that's that is who we are now. You, can, I don't. I just, I just try. You know, I, I'm lucky. I don't know. I mentioned the other night. I'm a hairdresser, so I talk to a lot of people. Now, my clientele are very much like me. My boss said to me, "You have to calm down the political stuff because yeah. people say, <laughs> people say you're cynical." And I said, who says I'm cynical? Now, obviously, his clients, because he sits right next to me, right? Sure. So, um, for the next, I was I was upset, pissed. I was the whole bit. I was like, fucking, fucking, you can't even be yourself. You get shit on. I'm yeah, still going to be myself anyway, but I swear to God, for the next three days, everyone who sat in my chair, the first words out of their mouth were, can you believe? And <laughs> I was like, I looked at him and I said, well, what do you want from me? I found like-minded people. That's but, right. Like, a few of them have freaked out about fluoride. And see, my clientele is open. They're open-minded. Mm -hmm. But I'm in a big salon, and I'm one hairdresser. And I have one guy who came to me, and he's in finance, so I started talking to him about the markets and the world and how it all spins and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, what I thought, and threw a glass eye darkly. And after he's done, he's like, I love my hair, you know, but uh, I don't like to talk about this stuff when I get my hair cut. Right. You know, I said, oh, shit. Well, I said... I'm really sorry about that. You should go see Tammy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I pointed to the girl who's like three Way to go. Now. Way to I go. Said, I said, I promise, she'll only talk to you about American <clears throat> Idol and fucking maybe one of her kids did something stupid or uh, and the guy, and then I walked away laughing. He came back, the bastard, right? He was just like, I was like, what an asshole. But this is what we're up against, right? Yeah. People are like, I don't want to hear your opinion on something, right? It's like, yeah. well, I'm just like you. I have a job, too. You know, I'm a person, too, right? And it's like, no, your opinion doesn't matter because you don't like my desk job, right? It's like, oh, my God. We're, we're in deep, kids. We're in deep. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to pull Aaron in and watch your ears because his microphone usually doesn't work right away. Yeah, bring in Aaron. <laughs> All right. But, but you're absolutely right. It, it, it's, you know, surround yourself with people that think alike because I, I think it's our, our own security blanket that we can confidently talk it out with other people. That's why I'm here with you guys. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. 100%. Listen, uh, we started, uh, Jeff and I and my brother and uh, a friend of ours, just because we heard all this stuff and we're like, well, why don't we just go on there and banter it about and shoot the shit and just say, hey, what the fuck, there's a bunch of people that hate this shit, right? Yeah. And uh, that's where it starts. When you, The more you read, the more you're blown away. And then that's where you just realize you're in a cycle, too, right? Yeah. It's just I'm back. You, you, hey, Max. What's up, Max? Is Aaron, Aaron. here yet? Yeah, he's yeah, coming in. Aaron's there here. he is. Aaron, you're early. Uh, we're, we're still recording. You got here on before before the uh, recording's over, it's weird. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> fucking late, man. <laughs> well, you Aaron, guys are out, you out in now. a wheelchair, Aaron? Aaron? Yeah, that's why I'm always late for everything. Everything's <laughs> uphill. <laughs> no, one of my best friends is in a wheelchair as well. Get a motor on that thing. Everybody lives upstairs, and I'm always going uphill. Put <laughs> <laughs> in a ramp, right? Why is it be like that? Why? What? What? Why they gotta be like that? Why don't they just put it in a ramp? Yeah. Well, I don't know. So hey guys. enter and Max are outnumbered now. You got four Canadians on you. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Yeah. Hey. We're gonna have to start throwing oh around now. <laughs> coo -coo 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 -coo. <laughs> All I'm missing from, is the bear. Uh, Canada. Yeah. Casey, you're Canadian. No. no, but check this out. I grew up in a largely Hispanic community, a little community called Woodbridge, California. We had a General Mills plant next door, and all my friends were Hispanic. And we said A more times in a sentence than the Canadians do, so we got you. <laughs> That's bad, it's right? true. I noticed that. Awesome. Californians say A. Yeah. What's up, A? 
Yeah, yeah. you'd be right at home here, eh? <laughs> yeah. well, I want to I, I want to clarify something here, and you can edit this out if you want. But I have a big laugh against Americans. Because uh, they even made products about it. Up here in Canada, when you guys say down there, swag, to us, to us it means like the spot yep. between your bum and your balls. That's what you get swag on, right? And and now you guys have made it into to some kind of like, oh, I'm swag. Well, we just laugh at you guys up here. <laughs> yes, that's funny, eh? Now, they think they think you think they're wrong, but really, they that's exactly what they mean. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Oh, but they yeah. think it's pretty cool, and, and I laugh because one politician said, I'm so swag, and, and he, he started strutting away, and I just laughed, eh? Yeah, but that was that's his right. boyfriend. Uh, uh, his... Go ahead, Mike. Go ahead, Mike. No, I said, that's okay, you don't... Because our internet is better, and when our gas is cheaper. <laughs> yeah, and it's our gas. It's our gas. <laughs> hey, Max, uh, if if you don't mind losing an arm and a leg, you can afford gas up here. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. outrageous. But it's not, it's in, not our country, in our country, it's commier than your country. Yeah. <laughs> but let me tell you, the beauty, the beauty of gas electricity and all that stuff it's not part of our inflation so nothing really ever gets more expensive here it's fantastic right <clears throat> so it's not really part of our world anyway it's just something that happens right yeah well let's, let's look at the things that are similar your newscasters the women <clears throat> they wear red dresses and blue dresses just yeah. like our little whore newscast women who work for the new world order you see the newscasters that you watch on your TV, no matter what country you live in, they wear an all red dress or an all blue dress. That's a fact. Yeah. And you can see it by just turning on your news. It doesn't matter what channel. Divide and conquer. And that newscaster is the one who are doing the hoax of the Malaysian Flight 370. The person giving you the news is in on it. They're in on it. And 11, they're in on the Malaysian, they're not any hook, they're in on every hoax, okay? <clears throat> now, anybody out there listening, when you watch the news, pay close attention. Blue dress, red dress. Max. Seven days a week, all Max. channels, you're going to find you're going to find them. I remember that doing means a, they're a in video. On it. I got a funny anecdote for this, because I remember doing a video, and it was CNN, and the, uh, the woman... The host of the show was talking about how Obama has drawn the red line for Syria, and she was wearing a black and red dress with a red stripe right down the center. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just remember that. It's just like, oh my god, they're just so bloody transparent. But I don't think, I think most of them are just completely clueless, and they're programmed that way, and they just read off the television. Yeah, 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 yeah. But what they do is well, yeah. they tell them to wear a blue dress because blue, like, soothes people yeah, and puts them in an alpha day. state, they, they gets them prepared yeah. for suggestion. They took a full class on that in university, dude. Yeah, right. science, yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's why the news why is mostly... Yeah, and the news, it's, all the colors are all blue. Like, it's all, like, this alpha it's kind true. of stuff, you know? Well, the, the, the psychology I took in engineering in regard to like design and drafting or architectural is that women trust blue true blue and men love red because the lady in the red dress and if you look in a casino you can see it blue or red and and you'll watch because men tend to uh focus on the red machines and the women on the blue so there is a big psychology behind this yeah yeah i can't wear red shirts i hate women in red at all I hate the. I just hate the color red. Well, I laughed like crazy when Aaron and his wife made the video about flat blue earth. And blue and red. Blue and red. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey Max, I'm looking we at the dressed. screen oh, and your name is that. in red. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. That's because it looks yeah. good with the white. Plus they use it. Yeah. That's why. Yeah, I, I, I think. Like, uh, I had uh, red. 
just myself delving into all the symbology, um, I'm sure Casey knows way more about this than me, but uh, they use these symbols and colors all the time, and they know how yep. they work. You know, there's a science to it. Yeah. An old, evil, sort yeah, of Masonic. Magic. Yeah. Well, 2013 yeah. was the launch of the color heliotrope. Yeah. And if you notice, your Yahoo mail turned from, I think it was like blue, and it turned to purple. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, 2013 Super Bowl. Like a, all... like a violet purple. Eh? Well, yeah. it's interesting. It was, in every, it was in every store, for sure. For sure, well, for sure. well, it's interesting because Israel said that they couldn't get the uh, right color for the robes for the temple. And then they rediscovered that it was this snail out of, of course, Caspian Sea that Enter did a whole thing on that actually makes the color of the robes from the Temple of Solomon. So. Yeah. You know, it, it all comes down to this heliotrope color. It's interesting that they mark themselves with these colors. They're, they're color, uh, you know, like color revolutions, and they're specific to colors all the time, yeah. eh? Yeah, and, they're uh, from the uh, helioplex, uh, hexaplex trunculus snail, yeah. which is uh, derived from the cat and the Caucasus Mountains, exactly where the Boston bomber was from. And um, and they basically take this. If you do a Wikipedia search on heliotrope, you will be amazed at what you will find. It is a very magical color, and of course, hex means to put a hex on somebody, right. and that is the actual the of the uh, color. And it actually has six 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 in its makeup in its formula for the color. I mean, it is very evil. It, it was featured in the movie um, Harry Potter. Yeah. And casting spells. I mean, this goes. Uh, it makes everything over uh, in 2013 uh, this color. Well, listen. All this, all this symbolism is hidden on on everything that you have ever bought in a store. Your underwear, your T-shirts. The symbolism is on everything. I'm just drinking out of my teacup right now, and it's a, actually a coffee cup, and it's got three squiggly lines, which meant meant to look like heat coming from the cup. That's not three squiggly lines for heat. That's six six six. Yeah. Just like the monster can with the three lines, the claw lines at six six six. Yeah. Checking out my beer roll. bottle. My beer bottle. My beer bottle, which is German, has a key on it. Yeah. X beer has the key on There's it. No, I don't know what the hell the key can symbolize. But uh, octagon. There's nothing you can the purchase on Earth that doesn't have a symbolism on it. Yeah. Well, the whole world around us, Confucius said, are signs and symbols. Yeah, I know uh, I studied uh, marketing back in, in college, and uh, one of the things we laughed about, of course, was how they make women's deodorant look like uh, dildos, basically, right? <laughs> or the phallic shape, yeah. right? And that's, they know, like, yeah. marketers know this, that the the uh, suggestions, the shapes are very important when people come to uh, buy things, right? So it works like they, they know this so well in television I mean you can think of like I'm just thinking before uh, when you guys were talking about uh, Piers Morgan and his show and the colors like the green yeah. and the blue and they're in your face all the time mostly green but um, you know and of course with Sandy Hook they've been using the green and white theme for uh, almost everything dealing with that the ribbons the ribbons the ribbons, yeah. the ribbons. Not, to, not, not, not to mention the rainbow yes yes you yes. see they, they the dog you guys see that documentary, uh, what was his name, uh, Finding Adam Lanza or something like that? It was like a PBS show. They showed, they showed this un unseen until then portrait of the school class. And at the bottom, in front of the whole class, is, is, a, picture, is a, pic a framed picture of a rainbow. Yeah. Well, rainbow. you have the rainbow handprints, handprints, handprints. prints everywhere you yep. know you have the rainbow hand prints everywhere I did a video on all the signs and symbols Sorry. and um, yes the rainbow of course if um, you look they, into they monarch, wow. monarch programming it deals with the ability of uh, mind control and split personalities that's how they use it at least in the Illuminati it's all about mind control and split personalities so uh, when you see that you can edit this out Jeff Yelling 15 second lag oh I didn't know that. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I don't think I'll be editing much, but I'm sure the mind people... control. Yeah. 
Are, are you guys, you guys hear me now okay? Oh. Yeah. 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 You're in 42. It's the full, uh, the full rainbow spectrum fits within 42 degrees. And 42 is also the name of God. And 42 is, is a very secretive number. But uh, 42 is a very important number. Yeah, we've seen that number a lot lately, that's for sure. Uh, I'm sure you've covered it a lot. Yeah. yeah if you do a Wikipedia search on rainbow, uh, you'll, it'll show you a diagram, and it actually shows 42 degrees, and it shows all the colors of the spectrum fitting within those 42 degrees. That's really We're one of the colors. We're one of the colors of the spectrum, and they got us. They got us where they want us. I don't know how we're supposed to reach everybody, guys, but we have to somehow, right? Everybody yeah. loves Fruit Loops and, and 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 honeycombs for breakfast. I don't know what to do, right? I mean, they told us fluoride's good for our teeth, and we all have rotten teeth because we eat fucking Fruit Loops for breakfast. Right? I mean, it's not because we fucking drink fluoride. I should have the nicest teeth in the fucking world. I should have like pearly. Yeah. I should be in a magazine for fuck's sake, you know? But instead, I have cavities. I don't understand. I drank your fucking shit. I drank your fluoride, right? Why don't I have perfect teeth? Well, I can, expl I, I, so I can explain it to you. Uh, the fluoride is causing your brain to degenerate, so you can't understand why your teeth are bad. <laughs> Calcify, yeah. No, but that's, well, that, that upsets me, too. Like, when we think about it, like, God, we're only catching up now, and imagine all those years that we, if they had actually just been directing us in the right direction and actually put energy into us excelling to our highest levels, where we could be. Mm -hmm. But it's not That's important it. because we're not born into the right fucking bloodline, bloodline. Or whatever the fuck it works like. I already got speaking, speaking of fluoride, when I switched over, before I switched over to non fluoride toothpaste, my teeth, because I don't like the dentist. I haven't seen the dentist since I was 19. My teeth were getting so yellow and brittle, and they, were, and they looked horrible, okay? A month after I stopped taking toothpaste with fluoride in, and I got toothpaste without fluoride, the night and day difference. And within two months, I had brand new teeth, strong as hell. They never were sensitive to the cold water. They were never sensitive to the hot water. They, they, regener they rejuvenated. I got perfect, white, clean teeth. I haven't seen the dentist since I was 19. When I stopped using that stupid fluoride in the toothpaste, my teeth got healthy, clean, and white. Yeah, I, uh, I mean, I'm the same. We're brushing our using... teeth with poison control stuff, right? I, I mean, what? I, I'm what? amazed, guys. I mean, you go, you go to the, you go to the pharmacy or wherever you buy your your, you know, toothpaste or whatever. And they actually use the term fluoride to, as a marketing tool. Like they'll paste it across. <laughs> they get, fluoride. They got, they got that <laughs> mug face idea in uh, in the Soviet Union in the gulag. Yeah. And that's how they kept their prisoners docile. And then they had a problem back here where they didn't know how to dispose of it, so they just came up with, "Hey, man, let's just throw it in all the drinking water." Yeah, they'll drink it. Well, we are good yeah. for them. We're definitely the filter, the filtration system. But they said, once they once they put it into bags, then it becomes a product. Well, you know, can you put cat poop in a bag and then as a product? Well, you can if people will buy it. You know, and, and uh, you know, it's interesting to me that these dentists, like, they pick at your teeth, pick at your teeth. And I notice, like, I've always had very good teeth, and where they scrape and scratch is where the cavities started to come. And I'll tell you, I come across a secret the other day that you take turmeric and you just make a paste, half a teaspoon, a little bit of water, make a paste out of it, brush your teeth. Oh, my goodness, I got the whitest, brightest, most beautiful teeth that took years of smoking and coffee off of them. Well, just don't kiss anybody directly afterwards. <laughs> no, it tastes, it's not that bad. Didn't, the teeth uh... king. It was beautiful. I can't believe the results I got from it. Yeah, I remember uh, Aaron's, Partial, Aaron's yeah. wife doing a video on something like that, I believe. Hey, eh, Aaron? Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we don't use fluoride the toothpaste. No. no, we don't either. I got to ask you guys a question. How many people do you know that have, who, who the, first, the first couple of visits to the dentist, they, they had a ritual where you get two cavities, one on each side, on the upper back? 
Yeah. Who doesn't have two cavities in the upper back teeth? Yeah, yeah, they do it on purpose. They, 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 they you purpose. go to the dentist and they're they're drilling your teeth so they'll weaken. Yeah, they're them. mining. They're yeah. mining. They're looking. For yeah, yeah. <gasps> yeah. It's the uh, it's it's what, what do they put in there? What do they call it? Uh, it was lead, mercury. Lead. Yeah, mercury. Yeah. So everybody has mercury in their back in their upper back. Teeth. I know. Isn't that smart? Eh? Yeah. Let's take mercury. We already proved in the in the Renaissance that. Mercury causes severe brain damage, but we'll do it anyways. Well, we all get it. We all have Why do you think we all have them? It's yeah. about as strong as teeth in the back. Yeah, I yeah. honestly think um, like this more than ever shows the you know the the government agencies that are supposed to be protecting people, like uh, you know, and you, the FDAA and stuff like that. Um, in the United States, the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, as I got that wrong, but yeah. uh, that. You know, when you look into their history and you see that they have uh, pushed through every product that Monsanto has brought forth, um, yep. you know, regardless of any studies, in fact, devoid of any studies, that this is the real problem. The real problem is that our governments are not at all working for us. They're actually working to nope. keep us controlled, period. Yeah. And, Never mind our... Uh, Never mind our governments, but our, our dentists. Yeah. This is where they started taking control of the medical yeah. field through the but dentists. They, they are dentists, are doctors. They are, I honestly, the dentists alone are just mind controlled fools, right? Because they actually buy yeah. the programming. They go to like McGill or whatever university. And Every get other doctor. Every yeah, other doctor. Aaron, did, you, ever did you happen to see that article in the Gazette? Maybe Greg did in the Montreal Gazette. It was a year, maybe 2010, 2011, where a dentist came out and he fucking just was screaming against people who were going on about fluoride in the water system. And he's saying these people are absolute idiots. They have no idea what they're talking about. I'm a dentist. I yeah, graduated yeah. from McGill. You know, you're all yeah, idiots. Yeah. Did you remember that? Yeah, I'm a specialist. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yet McGill, yeah. yet yet McGill, yeah. the the you know, head so head is at uh, Bilderberg every year and uh, course, part yeah. of the yeah, yeah, all of it. Well, well the most uninformed people are doctors and dentists because they keep them from practicing their own medicine, mm -hmm. which means they do their own research and they'll find out everything they've been taught is wrong. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's why they had to take over China first with communism. I mean, Russia first, but China second, because it's the most uh, advanced medical uh, society in the world. <laughs> yeah, well, so. they, they can't stand yeah, they, 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 how, it. How many articles did we see about Eastern medicine being the death of all of us, right? Yeah, we yeah. Can't allow, yeah. We can't allow Eastern medicine. It's well, they, they try to imply that they died suddenly over there because of, because of that. <laughs> Because they ate an herb. They oh, died because yeah. they ate an herb? Oh, my God. I <laughs> yeah. better go to McDonald's fast, fast. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we better go to McDonald's. Oh, I wanted to say that we did an article on uh, The Lancet had put out, this a peer review had put out a report uh, indicating fluoride was... ...bad for you and everything. A peer review... Facebook and uh, YouTube and that have been making it that when you click on our site that it's coming up as if it was malware. There is no malware on our site. I and not allowed because we do not allow. But, you know, if you click on one of our PDFs, I assure you it is clean, it is good, and, and you can do so. But, you know, Facebook and, and YouTube, when some people click on our articles, they get warnings that our site may be, be malicious. It is not. Warning, this has too much yeah. truth in it. Uh, you're yeah. not allowed to look at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> warning, warning. Yeah. Warning. Please, please, yeah. please go on CNN. Please yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I was going to say something else. Uh, they wash their hands, and I often make the analogy they punch us pilot everything because they just wrote an article how France kicked out 10% of their farmland was given to America to grow GMO corn. Yeah. They kicked them out and they said, you're not allowed to grow that corn in our country anymore because you got those new super bugs that don't give a shit about your fucking them, corn ready fucking whatever, right? Yeah. You know that. Yeah, whatever. They, they eat that now, and they're like, I'm getting bigger and stronger now because I love my right? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, brands kick them out. So, they always put to the paper. 
You know, it's not a big article. It's always just a little quip it about, oh, by the way, France kicked out all the food that you eat every morning, right? Because they don't yeah, want to yeah. deal with it. Yeah. But, I mean, meanwhile, we gobble it down like, fuck yeah, I mean, it's yeah. crazy. But that's yeah. where they punch this pilot. I washed my hands of this. I told you you're killing the wrong man. But I told you. And, you know, they walk away. What? They're like, hey. I wash what, my hands. What do you think of the organic thing? You think that's a scam? Like, it's, like, more expensive and it's supposed to be, like, grain-fed no, meat and that, all that? I think that coincides with health and health, 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 health They constantly put out wellness health, health as an article, right? Well, the more money yeah, yeah, wellness. Yeah, I like that term, wellness. They got that from selling those bracelets, eh? Mm-hmm. Remember those bracelets health, there? Oh, and the big punchline was that, oh, you, you'll have such a sense of wellness. What the yeah. hell does wellness mean? <laughs> no, but I don't know. I've read in, like, happiness our, our, and our, bliss. <laughs> you can afford health if you have wealth, right? That's what you're Bread and circuses, about. Jeff. Yeah. Poor people will have to go to McDonald's and rich people can buy organic and freshly grown. And, you know, it's not cheap. Melissa and I can eat all organic. And let me tell you, it's like far. In as much as my mortgage to eat, and it's like, what the hell's going on? Yeah, they grow yeah. just to eat that kind of and there's only two of us. Yeah, well, that we're giving our wealth inadvertently to France. If they're not <laughs> growing Monsanto, then they must be have the angle on the uh, organic food market. Well, all of Europe oh, has picked out GMOs. Most I mean, France rules the world right now. Like, I mean, they're a well, powerful country right now. Well, every everything I garden is biodynamically done, and I yeah. use herbs and different things to make your uh, uh, your soil counteract all the chemicals. I highly recommend people to look up this show, uh, one one cow, one man, one planet, one man, one cow, one planet. Sorry. It is everything that you need to know how to save your soil to get this stuff out of it. And I grow tomatoes, just regular old beefsteak tomatoes, and they're bigger than your than your piece of bread. My husband complains because they're so big, but I mean my my kale is huge. My and I just garden on my deck and in a little bit in my backyard. Well, and we're gonna, I have we're enough. gonna have to alert the authorities that they're not spraying enough in your your neighborhood there. Well, yeah, I no, no. no I I buy more planes over there. Quickly. Yeah. <laughs> well, I counteract it by using biodynamics, and people need to learn how to use biodynamics because I, I that show that I give you, one man, one cow, one planet. They're saving India from soil that you could pick up and absolutely smell the chemicals. It was just chalk and chunks. And it, they have turned it into a beautiful, beautiful, it, it's amazing oh, stuff what biodynamics yeah. does. I've yeah. read so much about India, though, and the, all the people that went to their genetically modified crops are all poor and killing themselves now. I know, yeah. I know. Yeah. We, we could be, we, just, just for that example, we could be, like, so much more advanced if we didn't live under this stupid system. Yeah. Oh, it's ridiculous. I know, it's ridiculous. It's made to break. Everything's, back, everything's backwards. Yeah. The mm. last thing they want is, is, is people to take our, care of our themselves. God, our god is a, is a hexagon with three hours, three hour arrows going around it forever. TV is God. <laughs> but I highly Money. recommend everybody, if they want to grow a garden, do it biodynamically because that's how the elites do it. They only eat biodynamic foods. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but those fuckers also live in no fly zones and all that shit. <laughs> well, that yeah. Fuck, all that crap flying over their head. They don't allow people to grow for fucking miles around them. They, they all live in ranches in the middle maybe, of that uh, fucking Athens. Maybe we could all camp out uh, where um, Ted Turner has his buffalo range. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure they don't spray there. <laughs> Yeah. Dude, he's got, um, he's got I, the black. I can bury, uh, they, have, they have their little uh, garden at the White House. Mm-hmm. Why do you think Michael Jackson wore a mask? Huh? Yeah. Now yeah. it's all starting to make sense, isn't it? And gloves. You didn't want to touch anything. No, no, we're not touching any of that shit. Yeah. They would, that's for us, man. That's but, not for them. But I'm just saying to you, if you, you know, what you can salvage of the land you have or the backyard or the deck, or don't buy, uh, what do you call it, uh, the soil, miracle Grow. 
buy organic soil and start biodynamic and you can do it on a small you can do it in an apartment yeah yeah and and you could probably do it in the middle of a waste dump and that particular area you that can. you're treating would be completely fertile absolutely hey dude the, yeah, yeah. the heat coming out of the ground there you would grow the biggest tomatoes yeah yeah no exactly god, god provides man yeah <laughs> But, uh, you know, and it's all based on organics and, you know, teach yourself how to collect seeds. All my seeds I collect. I I set so many tomatoes aside to make salsa and they have, I take all the seeds out of it. Uh, Your cucumbers, everything. Get your own seeds because pretty soon you won't be able to learn. in the middle of the city. I you got all exactly yeah, you know, it's a, on my roof. It's interesting. I don't know if you guys saw the final episode there of The Walking Dead of this past season, but they had these flashbacks, and if you know the characters, the, the old sort of guru guy with the beard uh, took the lead character out, take him away from his guns, take him and his son away from his guns to teach him how to plant. Yeah. And I think in a way... That is a message trying to tell us that the real solution to most of our problems is to come together and start growing our own food instead of buying yeah. the Fruit Loops and all the dog food that they sell us, all the GMO crap that they're poisoning us with, really. Yeah, it's strange. A lot of these movies, Jeff, that they're actually showing us like uh, how to really live. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the thing is, is instead of sitting there watching these movies that are, uh, you get that weird twing in your ear that sets off your mind to go into nowhere land. You've heard it. You heard heard that we. It's it, it just sets your no, mind. That only off. happens. No, that only happens in Alberta. <laughs> it's a harmonic. <laughs> it's a harmonic in the it's in the, the movies. Water. Well, like, uh, what was that one about the uh, bombs and stuff? He was a bomb guy in Iraq or whatever. Uh, it had a lot of... Hurt Locker. But in that movie, uh, that piercing sound that you get from certain movies, instead, take the time, you have a... Yeah, Hurt Locker, yeah. Take the time and go on YouTube. I mean, this is the biggest gift you have in container Yeah, yeah, no, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, learn, because... Right yeah. now, it's critical. If it sounds in- yeah, that's right. Yeah, the piercing sound that you hear. It's all is- binary code, man. Yeah. Yeah, it's all binary code. Harmonics. Yes, You're out it is. Like Ten seconds. Mm-hmm. But what? like I say, use YouTube. Learn how to container garden. No matter what, I know, Aaron, you've got a deck. You got a little area. I got a, I got a little balcony. Yeah, a balcony can do it, and you're you'd be amazed at how many containers you can stack, and and you know, yeah, grow. Yeah. Oh, it really, wow. I mean, all of my herbs, all of my vegetables, all of my you canning. Can make some pointers. Yes, I will. If I anybody grow wants vegetables them. And stuff yes. on my balcony. Yes. I got lots of sun here, like a lot. It's perfect. All day. Then. But okay. Th- okay. that's the thing now, is... Now, now I'm going to play devil's advocate here, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, everyone shows up in my work, say, all these ladies that finish work at 5 o'clock, they're burnt, they get their hair done, and then they got to go home and prepare supper. Guess what? It never happens. They go oh. get something. Because they've got everyone believing now that if they don't work, they're useless. You're not doing your share. Yeah. You're not doing your part. Where they never, they don't even consider a family part of life anymore. Yeah. They've, 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 they've done. See, this is where you have. I don't know how we're going to bring people back to the fact that family is not a destructive not thing. A it's destructive actually thing. Important. It's actually important. Mm-hmm. So, so I don't know. I, I, know. I, I, I think we could do many I, shows I, on this topic. You know, it's, 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 it's just. It's a total concentrated attack on on what humanity should be. Uh, families are have been destroyed and targeted for a very long time. And if yeah. you watch all the popular culture, which I rarely do, but I get enough slivers here and there, you see the rot and how they they poison people's minds against having sort of family. And it's it's like especially in the commercials, you notice it all the time. How none of that. I was talking to Greg the other day. You guys may have seen this commercial. Maybe Aaron has seen it because they show it during the hockey games. But they had a, a mother who was preparing dinner. Of course, the dinner that she was preparing was a delicio pizza or something awful like that, right? 
and she couldn't get the family to come to the, the dinner table because they were all on their devices. Now, the father's yeah. on his laptop, the son's on his, you know, on his uh, yeah, yeah. iPad or whatever. Sounds like the bus. So what she Sounds did. Sounds like the bus ride to work. Yeah, so she, she takes a photo of the pizza and then sends Starting it. Right, and then everybody comes, and of course everybody's there at the table, but everybody's still looking at their devices, and the the mother's all happy because she finally got them to come, you know. And it's like this is how they poison our minds. They're telling us that it's natural for us not to sit down and have conversations at dinner. It's natural for you know the father to be looking at his iPad and his son to be looking at his phone or or whatever. And it's it's just awful. I mean, it's yeah, everything is is well, yeah, every every. Everybody's uh, wired up to the Xbox. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And the Xbox what is it, wired what? to the NSA, and the NSA is watching everything you do. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. We well, have you know, 50, you have 50,000 people that check out some of you guys. 50,000, this, that, and big numbers, whatever. These kids that put up a video game have millions and billions in like 10 minutes. I know. It's beyond comprehension. Like, I mean, that's where you have to, like, I, I keep stepping back saying, holy cow, I'm learning so much, I'm growing, and then I look around and people are shrinking, and it's like the total opposite, and you end up still on the fringe where we've always probably been, right? You're a, you're, yeah, you're a right? divergent, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're a divergent, exactly, they got to read the program. Well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were talking about the end times before, and it's like uh, I think it's going to be like the stand. We're all we're all like looking for something, and we can hear something, and there's only a few of us left, and we all stagger into a cornfield in Nebraska. Let's hope it's not the longest walk because I'm tired already. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Anything. No, I, I, I want to ask you guys, what do you think, that, I, I've tried to go over it in my own head, what what I think of why I want to help people to wake them up. What do you think drives us? Why? Because, we, you know, we're all at the point, like even Max is, is it worth it? You know, do we do it? I of course, wonder what, souls are further along than theirs. We I guess to so. Achieve, achieve <laughs> like, because if we don't, then we'll be incurring the same sin. Right. And see that, oh, you, I don't know if you guys have read the Bhagavad Gita yet. But if you're able to ever read the Gita and have a good translation of it, one of the things it says, and it's the word within, if you're aware of a sin or if you're aware of a wrongdoing and you don't do anything about it, you incur the sin mm -hmm. and you exactly. are the problem as opposed to standing up and warring the problem. And we choose to stand up and fucking be the pain in people's asses. That's all, right? But, I mean, we have to do it, because if we don't do it, we won't be able to live with ourselves. That's why we... I, uh, I, I got a kick out of Mark Passio talking about this, and, and how, like, he, he refers to ignorance as ignore ants, and that yeah. people who choose to ignore are bad people. That is the definition of a bad person. Somebody who does, who knows... We're within. Yeah, that, that will not act. So, I, I think that we're just good people, and that we care about humanity, we care about our friends and families, and we want people to that's be able right. to take control that's of right. their lives, right? That's, that's right. Well, thank God there's people like that, because if not, the whole world will be already lost. Long the, time ago. The, there, there used to be a lot more per, per capita, only a hundred years ago, well, right here in Montreal. Teach, they used to teach good things. They used to teach, don't lie, don't no, but steal, people, don't people cheat. Back, and back they teach years. you to steal and lie and yeah. cheat. Yeah, right. But a hundred years ago, people were really leery of the government. They were public enemy number one. They were to be watched all the time. Yes. Here here they tried to pass a, a mandatory vaccine in like 1870. Yes. And and the, the city converged on, on the uh, WHO, which was at the time, you know, the medical... Uh, right, right in the heart of Montreal, Parliament, uh, government building, municipal... Uh, City Hall and all that. They smashed every window down there. They, the all the doctors had to run for cover underground because it's full of underground cities. It's the ancient part of Montreal. Yeah, that's well, a good they've story. Seen the yeah. with, they've seen the problem of population for a long time, and not that we shouldn't all be aware of what population can do to a planet, especially the way we live. 
I mean, because we're going to pollute and kill everything anyway, right? And eventually you won't be able to drink the water because there's going to be so much plastic in it mm -hmm. that we're all going to die anyway, right? I mean, mm -hmm. that's reality. I mean, people, people, oh, yeah. no, I deserve everything. No, you don't, right? And I'm oh, sorry the corporation is allowed to tell you everything. They're doing they, everything they can to muck up this beautiful planet, God's creation. Oh, no, I know, dude. I'm everything. from Newfoundland. I'm from God's Acre man i'm from like out in the north atlantic cold and wind blown and i mean wild and people there still hunt and fish and live and they're not rich and they don't care because they're not about they're about their family and they're about their their relatives and, and doing the right thing and helping people and they're all smiling sure they drink a lot but they're all smiling right i mean yeah i mean you, right. you don't you don't win in life when you have, uh, you know, when you die and have a bigger closet, you know, than than the next person, right? I mean, whatever you have and you, whatever you, you know, when you pass in this world, you can't take all that shit with you. At the end of the day, what is it worth? It's worth nothing. What's really worth uh, everything is the people around you. I'm cutting out again. <laughs> you guys yeah. hear me? Yeah. Yeah, but yes, I agree. But they yes, condition us they condition us through popular culture that greed is god or greed is good. I mean, uh, every show shows it. Every show tells the youth that you have to look out for yourself before you look out for anyone else and that the, the bottom line is money. Time is money, life is money, you know, and and uh, most kids grow up with subjects, that. One of the biggest subjects in the government, one of the biggest subjects in the government is euthanasia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they can't yeah. wait to start killing people. They can't yeah. wait. They're like, well, you cost a lot of money in your last three months of life, right? Yeah. And the guy's like, well, I might bounce back. And they're like, nah, I don't think so. But I'm not well, dead well, yet. Well, that's Here's what's... a rope. You'll be fine. <laughs> but that's what scares me so much about I'm this. <laughs> I'm not quite dead yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's what scares me so much about this OPPT movement. You're the worth. Well, if you're hurt or harmed or whatever, it, you're not worth anything. They're saying you're the value, you're the money. Uh, you know, it, it, it concerns me that what if you're unable to work or you're unable to do things? It's socialistic. Well, yeah, how, do you, how do you provide profit? Sure. Exactly. Sure. You're, and you're absolutely useless in the corporate world. Yeah. You're like, what, what, what? You can't. Yeah. You can't show up here fucking 50 hours a week for minimum wage, you yeah. asshole, right? <laughs> yeah. we, need to, we need to do something immediately, right? This guy, Kevin O'Leary in Canada, is oh. on the Lang O'Leary Show. So tonight he was talking about the U.S. The Supreme Court just struck down the fact that they wanted to put a cap on how much you can make as a political donation. Yeah. The Supreme Court of the United States of America struck it down saying, no, that can't be right. That can't be right, putting a cap. In Canada, God love us, um, somehow they circumvented, but we only have a $100 maximum you're allowed to give to any political party. Yeah. Now, well, somehow they get all the unions to contribute, and each person contributes, and they have ways around it, whatever. Sure. But in the U.S., I mean, if you're rich, you can contribute whatever you want, right? Yeah, and uh, the Supreme Court just struck that down, and it's like, and Kevin O'Leary was bragging about how how fantastic it is now that the people that are able to manage their money are in charge. Yeah, uh, I mean, how sick is that? He is he is so whack. I just I can't stand the man. I couldn't stand him on the Dragon's Den where they steal people's ideas and then oh, suppress them. Yeah, I know he's a crook. Straight up. Yeah. He looks like a penis. He does. He looks like a penis. He's even got the penis haircut, right? Yeah. I mean, just a penis. He's yeah. like, I'm a giant penis and I love money. And yeah. I love people that love money and I he's hate everyone. Very, yeah, he's a very greedy persona. Very greedy. That's his role, right? I'm yeah. a greed, sir. And greed is good. And people that can own government are smart. And people that don't own government are stupid. Yeah. And that's the way it is. And it's like, we, we're stupid because we don't own government. That's his philosophy. And that's their philosophy. Yeah. We're stupid because we don't have enough money to own government. I, I put a video in the chat area. 
it's by NASA or ESA, and it's the garbage that we have floating around out in outer space. So, which one? The third one? Yeah, the last one that I put in, and it yeah. it's uh, quite interesting because it shows rocketry and what they started and the timeline and how much crap we have floating out there. But they put the blame on the garbage on you and me, and it's not us putting it up there. I mean, they're taking our money. They're putting what are you these talking about it? I sent up three satellites. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Greg, I knew it. You think I'm only cutting here? Let me tell you. Yeah. Wow. I've always pictured you ever. You guys ever see like the rings of Saturn close up? Their depiction of it, their fake uh, <clears throat> image of uh, Saturn. Anyways, uh, you see all these rocks floating around. And the that, that makes up the rings. Well, around Earth, it's garbage. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we'll have well, rings soon. <laughs> well, this video I think is, yeah. If you start it around, oh, I don't know, um, a minute 24 and just let it run and you realize just how much stuff they've put up there. It started with nothing. But, now. but they say that, like, if they put the stuff up there. Then if other satellites, how, how do satellites even stay up there if they're being shot at with projectiles that are going like 10 times faster than a bullet? Because mm-hmm. that's what Dude, it's like. Because I mean, whatever, they tell us, whatever they tell us is only half or a quarter or a third they of They can't even yeah. get up there. They, they probably don't even have satellites. Well, when you look at this and what they're depicting. Oh, they definitely as, have satellites ready to zap us. Yeah. Well, when yeah, you yeah. look at this and you look at the amount. So this is what it looks like? Yes. Really? Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> they really? Can't it's find got this oil run? Oh, my God. Really? It's got rings. Yeah. The rings yeah, of Saturn. Can. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> they can't find the plane, but they can find the rings. Yeah, they, yeah. It starts at 1960 and it goes oh up. Oh my god, this the is garbage. a trip, man. This is a trip. Holy shit! Look at this. Yeah, the garbage is floating around out there. If if this is true, and they couldn't find a plane, are you kidding me? But they'll yeah. blame it on us because we want cell phones, or you know, honestly, I can get along without a cell phone. I, 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 people, I won't agree to cavity, people won't agree to cavity searches without another missing plane. That's it. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. Now you'll agree to x-rays and cavity searches. And whatever it takes to fly, you'll do it, right? If you yeah. jump through hoops, like with like a fucking dolphin. Well, but listen, plane, our, right? but listen, the stand that we should take is that we shouldn't be cavity searched because the guy was safe for having the phone up his butt. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, no, so, that guy should be allowed to put well, a phone up his butt. Yeah, but now they'll say, well, uh, that guy was able to stick a phone up his butt, so that means a terrorist will be able to do it. Therefore, we got to search your butt. Right, there you go, yeah. Well, eventually they're going to have to remove women's breasts who are pregnant oh. because there's milk inside there. Yeah, yeah exactly. The milk is no good for the plane. No, but they bought, can't they, bring they, milk on the they plane. They have a campaign for that, too. Like, it's politically incorrect to pull out your boob and, and feed your baby in a metro or, uh, you know... Yeah. It, it's yeah. not as legal, but it's like frowned upon, and, you know. Yeah, a lot let of the women baby cry. What's wrong with you? So let they the prefer to feed their baby their formula, formula with yeah. the uh, jet fuel in it, or, yeah. or like plastics that sterilize them and t- like make them feminine. Yeah, yeah by by sphenol. Yeah. Well, getting to this this Fort Hood thing here, how, how they got some balls bringing up the same damn uh, barracks, Fort Hood. Yeah. On another shooting. I mean, the other one was a hoax, and this one's a hoax. Yeah, the, I think they do it. It's it's there's a reason why they do it because it's fresh in the minds of the sheeple, so they know that oh, Fort Hood people will automatically associate that term with something terrible, and just mm-hmm. like they did with Sandy, they had the Hurricane Sandy that conveniently came in and hooked. They even talked about it hooking yep. on CNN. Yeah, yeah, left to right, <laughs> left to send. Yeah. 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 And then oh, they bring in Sandy Hook. Jeff, so they, you got they, the hook right on your on your picture, on your Skype picture. That's the hook. That's the yeah. Sandy Hook right there. I didn't even know I had a picture yeah. on there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's Sandy Hook. It is the hook. Is it yeah. the, yeah. the Free Radio Revolution's uh, uh, symbol? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Ah, yes. Exactly. Free Radio Revolution. Yes. Re- yes. That's it's Jeff I was wondering to ask you. It's the like, Jeff okay, Hook. It's the Jeff Hook, Mc- man. Greg McCannis is your partner. Like, how does Free Revolution... Revolution. 
Oh, I lost you there for a second. You were asking me a question? Sure. All those shows and... Hello? Hello? Hello, I'm I here. I can hear you. Yeah. Major lag. Yeah, Sorry, just... can you hear me now? Or am I really far behind? <laughs> yeah. And they don't oh, like us talking about it this like, way. Oh my god, are they talking free? Okay, so my aunt, my aunt is um, is a government official who works with the RCMP, whatever. She didn't know about the CSAC building, which is our electronic communications billion dollar building, which hired 1,500 of the smartest people in Canada to make all these programs to spy on us. And she didn't know about that. I talked to her about the gun grab that they're doing and going and confiscating people's guns in Canada. Uh, even though they're registered and they're legal and they're just taking them and she said I know and I'm like you know and you don't do anything yeah. Yeah. And like, yeah. but they all know and they're just like but we want to keep people they believe they're Compliance. keeping people safe Yeah, that's what they believe they believe they're helping everybody by not doing anything but the reality of it is they're being duped on their end but they don't realize they're being duped because they're good people mm -hmm. good people don't think you're yeah, yeah, so we're the people, don't, so, yeah. so 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 are the people in germany yeah during yeah, the uh, nazis you know boom. max they were good people or um, hey, hey 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 we're putting we're putting aaron can you hear me yes all hello yeah, yeah yeah i can hear you no um, Remember keep, the, yeah. the, the million bones or whatever? And the road to hell is yeah, yeah. with good intentions? You did a really great video on of that. Of course. You know? That was really good. Oh, thanks. That's, that's how it's at. I mean, it's like they, they convince children that it's okay to carry out these satanic rituals, you know, right at the house of Satan. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I read a book. I read a yeah. book along. Children, children I, don't know. They're children. Of course they they're, don't know. They're, they're told to. Of course they, they don't know, but... They run around, and they're like, yeah, fuck orange juice and pizza, fucking, you know. But I, I read a book a long time ago called Aztec, and it was about when the Christian church come into uh, the Mayans and introduce themselves, and then, you know, the Mayans had done this tradition of sacrificing a virgin girl, and they would use her thigh bones and lay out the bones and tap people on the heads with them. You know, are we getting any different that these uh, 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 rituals or, you know, in a, in a more passive way are coming back into reality and, and, and that they want us to do these rituals. Do you notice that? Oh, yeah, they yeah. love it. They, yeah. they get off on it. They're all jerking uh, off on it. Sorry yeah. about it's not only <laughs> they get off on it, it's black magic. It's, it's yeah. a way yeah. to, to steer first us first. in a direction where they want us to go. Yeah, I, th I think oh, they've I been doing this stuff all along. Everything, everything we should the nail on the head. Mm -hmm. Everything is black magic. So that, that's what the masses have to wake up to. You know, the, the witchcraft exists. It, it is black magic. It is all the devil. Yeah. Okay, you got all your religions. Every last one of them. All, all, the, all the, I don't care if you go into the Catholic Church or what church you go to. What, pick a religion. It's satanic. Okay, it's they worship the, the devil. God is only one God. There's not a thousand religions at all. And you die and you get down. Oh, let's see, what religion did you pick? No, it doesn't work that way. There's one God, and the religions are, what is, are were, were made to confuse the hell out of you. Okay, they're run yeah, by the New right. World Order. They're all satanic. Uh, all I, I think, religions I think, uh, are run by the Catholic Church. I, I think Catholic the Church is the most satanic club in the world. They, they're devil worshippers. Yeah, yeah. The, religions are, are command and control, top to bottom. 100%. Mm -hmm. That's exactly 100%. what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, it's always been and about it's control. too bad because... Well, well, like, because it's, top, they, it's, it's cockroaches that they... Like, they go around culling races throughout history, and they pick the slimiest scumbags in that race and, and basically uh, exterminate the rest of them. Mm -hmm. so, so, like, this is how they've... they've uh, improve their bloodline you know their bloodline reflects what our society is and our society is totally made to break and that's what they are made to break but you know i look at people like uh ivanka trump and her husband we were looking at that the other day in the daily mail and and they look identical it's like brother and sister and yep, yeah. these people they, they are. yeah they well, they are. yeah well, that's you the, know, I mean, the, the Ptolemites were all like that, right? The Egyptians. 
Yes. And they are directly uh, the British monarchy's uh, distant, uh, well, maybe not so distant, sort of um, descendants of the Ptolemites and of yeah, Vlad, I... uh, uh, Dracula, right? Count Dracula. Mm -hmm. And even you there's even the a way video. They bring in that... There's even a video in which uh, Prince Charles is visiting Transylvania uh, yeah. Castle and bragging about being related to uh, Count Dracula, who is one of the yeah. most brutal mm -hmm. uh, rulers in history, in European history. That's not to mention Hungary. Yeah. yeah. Not to mention they're all Germanic. Yeah. Whatever. They're, they're all, all Germanic. German. Yeah. I mean, they, the, the other guy had to get out of town because he was fucking pro-Nazi, right? Yeah. They yeah. They blamed it. Yeah. They blamed it on the fact he had a girlfriend or whatever. Like yeah, they fucking take the big one, gives a shit. Yeah. Oh, I'll have fucking five hundred girlfriends and fuck you. You're still giving me my fucking. Do you're still paying my taxes? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so that's why they got rid of him because he was a Nazi sympathizer. Right. He was like I'm Germanic. I'm not getting rid of my German family heritage. Right. Mm -hmm. We are the fucking German people. And they still run everything, and they've created the European Union, and now they have Britain and the European Union, all under Germanic fucking rule. Great. Yeah. And, and what's the what is the British royalty? It's Sax Gotha. Yeah, Gotha. And, and even even William, he he married uh, a Rothschild, or I should say, a goldsmith. Rothschild and goldsmith were related before. It's all it's all incest. I mean, second cousin, first cousin, you know. Oh and, yeah. And, and, uh, you know, I, re I recall a time when you had to have blood tests in order to marry. I don't think it's far off again. I think they're going to go back into the eugenic programming. Of oh, yeah. it, We're taking a they're step gonna, back. They're going to stop people who have... Not to, uh, mi not to mention hybrid, the, hy the new hybrid man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, do I need chips? I'll get some chips. I don't... Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's so cool. I, you know, I got it from a football game. Yeah, they were uh, handing them out. Yeah, I want to. I want to clarify something. I mean, if you get a hip replacement or you get an elbow or knee or whatever, I mean, you're not. To me, I think that's acceptable, and I don't think that you know it's a bad thing. But when you start cognitively changing your mind with microorganisms or chips or you know um, strengthening yourself to be a super uh, here a power when you don't need it, I, I think that then it comes into a cosmetic thing that, you know, well, I'm you're not... going to be part of the machine. Yeah. Part of yeah. the cube. Yeah. Yeah. Just like, well, futile. people may as well be these yeah. days. With, with, they're always got their head in an iPod everywhere I go. They're bumping into walls with their yeah. iPods. And... Well, pretty soon they can plug it in the back of their head and see everything they want. Or, or you can do like that one virtual show where other people, the poor, will go out and act out your world for you like uh, Next Life, eh? And uh, do their things while you sit in a chair and live, uh, you know, through them. Yeah, I saw so, I saw something disturbing. Um, they they were I think it was RT and they were showing how there's an app that if you want to avoid people, avoid like ex girlfriends or ex boyfriends, right? Um, yeah, you, you can get this pump, app pump, right pump. for your smartphone or your your, your tablet or whatever, <laughs> and it will alert yeah. you where these people are, <laughs> so that you can avoid them in your city or whatever in your neighborhood. And I thought it was just like to me, it's like it's gotten so crazy that we can trace every single step that almost anybody makes right now. I mean, of course, people are setting themselves up for it by carrying this type of technology around with them. And of course, as we've seen with the BBC, they're already promoting having the microchips put into you so that you'll have it embedded in your body and then they'll be able to forever trace everything that you do. But it's, it's really crazy that the, where it's getting at. Oh, I'm getting lag.